What's up guys? Let's have a little study session together here. Let's um, watch and study Dave Hopla. He's probably the most accurate shooter in the world. Um, he holds a lot of records and he just, he does, the guy doesn't miss. And I think this is the kind of guy you want to be emulating. Obviously him and someone like Steph Curry. Um, like these are the guys you want to study. You don't necessarily want to study someone like Ray Allen or Kyle Korver. Um, I mean, it depends on your height, I guess, because like those guys are using their height to their advantage. Like I, most of you guys watching this aren't six, seven, you know? <laughs> so let's, um, let's take a look at these, this more, I can go on and on for hours about why smaller players are generally better shooters. And I actually have another video on it, but let's just say in general, smaller players are better shooters. And if you don't believe me, go look at the best free throw shooters in the league. Um, you know, like the top 50 free throw shooters, um, you're going to see most of them are guards, um, skill players. But let's let's study Hopla's form. And, um, you know, uh, one other disclaimer is a lot of people will say, oh, you know, try to shoot like Hopla in, your, in the game and you're going to get your shit blocked. And I don't know why they say that because his form is like pretty fucking normal, guys. Like his form is like as standard as it gets. The only thing I think that he doesn't do uh, standard uh, before I tell you, can you guess it? You're looking at it right now. I'm looking right at it. Do you see what I see? His knees are outwards instead of inwards. Usually, uh, you know, a NBA player's knees are in pointed inwards. That's a pretty big difference. And I think that's a product of, um, you know, maybe he can generate a more power that way in his uh, shot um, with that kind of like squat stance, right? I mean, you don't squat with your knees inward um, when you do a, a squat, you know, um, you do. But the reason NBA players one of the reasons why their knees are inward is because it stops their east to west movement. When a, when a basketball player is off the dribble or even on a catch and shoot, you know they, they bow their knees inwards because it stops them from moving at, uh, east and west. If you're going like this, you're not gonna be able to move east and west, you know. Um, so I think that's the one major difference, and and that I will agree where they say you know try that in the game, uh, and it's not so good. Um, and I think that's probably right in that, in that instance regarding his leg stance. Um, perhaps if you're wide open though and spotting up, this might be a better a better way to do it than knees bowed inward. Um, but the first thing I want to look at is starting from a shot pocket. Um, you know, like, again, this is on the same theme. Like, the closer the ball is to your body... Uh, in in your shot pocket, the harder it is for a defensive player to swipe it out of your hands. Um, but that being said, when we shoot the ball, I would imagine we want to go straight up and down and into our release. Um, or at least straight up and down to into our set point. So if our set point is here at um, you know the 90 degree set point let's see if we can get a side angle on his shot here here we go so if our set point is here if our set point is there let's slow to slow the speed down here a little bit if our set point is here I imagine it makes shooting easier if we look at my mouse cursor here if we go straight like okay let's let's look at his shot pocket like if we shot pockets here like I imagine optimally, as far as only accuracy is concerned, uh, you know, assuming we're wide open, speed of release and all that doesn't matter. Only accuracy, I am assuming that like, you wanna just go straight up and down. You don't like, so that might mean you have to keep the ball farther away from your body, which means you're susceptible to getting the ball swiped a little more. Let's see where he keeps it. Uh, this is the first thing I'm interested in is seeing if it's straight up and down or if he does keep it in like a... Let's see where his shot pocket is. Okay, so his shot pocket, it, like, like his arm is 90 degrees in his shot pocket. This is basically 90 degrees here. 
still 90 degrees, still 90 degrees, still 90 degrees. So it, from his shot pocket all the way up into his set point, the ball stays at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna take some notes here. Um, 90, I'm gonna write 90 degrees, elbow angle, the whole time from shot pocket to set point. Uh, take note of that. I think the side angle is much better for what we're trying to learn here. There we go. So again, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Um, the next thing I want to look at is his elbow. Is is his elbow like tucked in like so this is one thing I wondered, like, should my elbow, like, okay, like, when you play video games, a competitive gamer plays video games, he has the mouse in his hand, right, and he uses his palm as a pivot point to kind of accurately um, aim. Now, do we want to use our, our elbow tucked in to our side as a pivot point in the same manner that we a, a competitive gamer would do that with his mouse? And it does look like, from this angle, you can see it's actually more than tucked in. It's even um, more toward, like not more towards his navel, but it's not like on this, it's definitely not on the outside of his body. It looks like it's um, like, what's this, like uh, kind of in his oblique there. So yeah, he does keep the elbow tucked in while uh, in the shot pocket it will be the next note that we'll take. Uh, the next thing we're going to uh, analyze is his rhythm here. And um, I noticed, I watched this earlier and I, I made the connection earlier that he has the same rhythm as Steph Curry, um, more or less. So shot pocket. He does a one-two almost always, by the way. Um, and I've found from my research that I think the reason he likes the one-two more than the hop step, yes, maybe a lot of coaches will say the hop step is better because you can get your shot off quicker. But if you hop, if you want to align, if you want to line up your toe, right, and you want to line up your toe to the basket as standard basketball shooting practice. Um, it's easier to do that on a one-two. On a hop, it's less accurate when you're li not li you're not squaring up as accurately. Whereas you do a one-two, you you can accurately pivot into that um, into that squaring up form accurately. I'm gonna take a note on that. So my note there was one two step more accurately squares up the feet. Maybe slower, but we're not we're not worried about that. And 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 you know one of the reasons I you know I'm kind of like yeah Steph Curry can get off his shot um, quicker than anybody else ever, and he's still accurate with it. Here's the thing, um, I in my opinion. It's not hard to get open shots in basketball, guys. It's really not. Like, it's so easy to come off a screen and just, you can just shoot it. Like, if, with the right ball movement, um, for me, I mean, from my experience, it's easy to find open shots. It's easy to find wide open shots. A lot of times you'll have people running at you, but there's just no way they can get to you in time. Um, I don't know. And you can you can create a quick release in in this fashion of shooting. By the way, is very standard. It's not like it's a slow release by any means. So again, the rhythm part though that, that was a good angle on the camera angle we had there too. Let's look at that again. Okay, so shot pocket, 
he's already bringing the ball up as he steps into it, which is interesting to note, which goes to add to my point that, hey, you can make this a quick release. You know, you don't have to one, two, and then start getting into your shot motion. He's already into his shot motion as soon as one foot, as soon as he catches the ball, basically. Let's see how long he takes to get his motion, motion started. So, boom, catches the ball. One, and it's coming up. The next thing I wanted to notice was, like, what point does he start bending his um, his knees? So, as the ball's coming up, he's bending his knees. So basically, as the ball's coming up, he's bending his knees. Ball gets to his set point. Okay. So it does stay in his set. He does. It is a two motion shot. It's, it's a bit of a two motion shot because you look at that was very um, informative right there. That was like clear cut right there. So watch. Did you notice that? I don't know if you saw what I saw there. But look. He gets to a set point. He's bending his legs. And watch. It's already in his set point. And he's still going down. No, actually, it wasn't completely in his set point. It was like almost completely. 90, it was just before he got to 90 degrees. It's exactly 90 degrees uh, elbow angle, by the way. So as soon as it gets to 90 degrees, boom, he uses the power of his legs to uh, push the ball towards the rim. But look, at the same time as his legs extend, so do his so does his arm the exact same time his legs start to extend okay arms not extending neither are the legs legs extending so is the arm um and the toes don't forget those toes Ends on the tippy toes, you know? Your whole body shooting that ball. Uh, another thing looks like a little habit. Watch, watch after he releases the ball. Watch how he brings his hand back. Did you notice that? That is very telling. That tells me so much. So remember when we were in the very beginning, we were... Um, Very, very fucking interesting. Watch what did watch what he does after he releases the ball. Watch how he uncoils his hand. So he uncoils his hand here. There it's uncoiled like a fucking snake. It looks like a fucking snake just attacked, right? But watch how he brings his hand back down. Watch watch this. He doesn't just bring his arm down. <laughs> he brings it straight up and down. Remember I was in the beginning of the very first thing I was looking at was the 90 degree angle from the shot pocket. Does he go straight up and down or does it like like let me let me show like let me get a paint. It's going to be rough, but let me like get a, open up a paint to show you what I mean. Okay, here's his um oops, sorry about that. Um Let me see, watch. Give me a second here. Right, let's do a brush, big wide brush. So here's here's the ball, right? Here's the ball. And it's in his shop. This is the ball from the shot pocket. I, I I was first thing I wanted to know was like, does the ball like Steph Curry does this? He brings it up because he's less than 90 degrees, and then he goes out like this. You know, that's like this is his set point and then that's his release and this is obviously the trajectory of the ball. But what Dave Hopla does and what I was curious about because he's 90 degree angle 
and I'm thinking he's more accurate than Steph, guys. He's more accurate than Steph. And I was thinking, I go, I'm assuming optimally you want the ball to go straight up. I'm like, oh fuck, that was not straight up. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming optimally. This is under optimal. I mean, this is what you're hoping for, and this is what you probably want to think about. Is you want, this is the ball, right? And it's in your shot pocket. You want the ball to go straight up. Then once it gets to your set point here, now you want it to go uh, out. So this once it gets to the set point, you want it to go out like this. And obviously you want that to be a 45 degree, or whatever it is, 55, or the arch, uh, the arc, I should say, um, the arc of the ball. Um, see the difference though, here's Steph Curry, he goes he goes out because he brings it to less than, uh, Steph, Steph is like this, Hopla is like this, and he brings it straight up from his, his shot pocket out. I, I think you follow what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying is this is his hand, right? Well, his hand, this is a set point. His hand will be like this, right? There's the floppy wrist. There's the wrist bent right here. When he brings his hand back down, he brings it back down this same line. So he goes up this way, and when he, when he brings his hand back down, he comes back the same way he came. And that really emphasizes well, for him, it creates muscle memory and a trajectory that he follows every time. But for the for me, that really illustrated that he does do this. He does is consciously thinking about because I, I when I thought I was that would probably optimally you probably want to do this. It would simplify your shot, and he does. Interesting that Steph Curry does this and has still found a way to be accurate with it. That's fucking crazy. Um. Anyways. I mean, I think you want to study Hopla, guys. I mean, you can study Steph. But it's, it's going to be more difficult to shoot like Steph, for sure. This is such a simplified way of shooting. And it's, you know, it's the way it's been taught for a long time. And you can, sure, you can learn to take like, uh, work like Steph, but it's going to be, it's going to be more difficult. Like you can learn to shoot like Reggie Miller if you want, but imagine if really, like, <laughs> Reggie probably had to practice a lot to shoot that way. Whereas this way, you could probably get as accurate as Steph or Reggie Miller without having to practice as much. However, your release is not going to be as quick and stuff like that. It's going to have its disadvantages for sure. For sure, it's going to have its disadvantages. But I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. I guess we'll 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 check this out more later. I think that that was that was good, man. I really think that those this what I showed you in the paint there. I think that that was the most interesting thing. Uh, let's got our notes here too. So let's review. Elbow tucked in, well in the shot pocket. Kind of creates a pivot point. Let's put that in. And, you know, it's probably good for muscle, muscle memory, too, because you have, if it's in the air, if your elbow's kind of just in the air, I mean, you don't know where it's not going to be the same every time. But if you have this, um, this spot on your stomach that your elbow touches the every time, it's going to be really good for muscle memory. So we'll say perhaps to create a pivot point, perhaps for muscle memory, perhaps both. Um, it's not much of a pivot point though. I think it's more of like a like a, you know more of a muscle memory thing Because um, it's not exactly the same as like the mouse uh, analogy um, 90 degree elbow So shot pockets at 90 degrees as he brings the ball up. It's still at 90 degrees the whole time and then uh, yeah Um, he uses the one tap, the one two step, and um, from the, I've, what I, the information I've gathered, the reason he does that again, I'll reiterate, is that I think the reason he prefers the one two step is it more accurately squares up the feet than the hop step. Um, next is that straight line up and down. I think I beat that 
think you get the point of that one. All right, catch you later.